That is a wonderful typo. I guess it didn't. Hi, I'm live. I don't think it makes any sense. So I'm going to take that a show. Oh, I don't want to show. Oh, that's what that means. Okay, I'm here. A little bit early. Been trying to do some prep work. Y'all come on in and find a seat. And I'm just going to work on these boards.
Hey, Glenda, how are you today? I'm going to move these so you can see what we did yesterday. Trying to get ahead of yesterday's. Sometimes priming these boards takes a little bit of time. Let's see, I don't need the water bottle up there anymore. Now yeah, put that one up there. And we're good to go. Put that back. Trying to get a smooth surface. Have you worked in encaustic before? Are you thinking about it or are you just having fun watching? All of the above. <laughs> Um, I didn't ask anybody if I could. I just did. Um, I do have it in one of the liner pans. Good. Checking temperature on everything. Um, you know, they, they gave you, well, they sold the little pan that sits in the unit. I used the pan built in for the longest time. And if you try hard enough, you can you can wipe out the wax, melt it, and wipe it out with a paper towel. You can get it clean. That's what I did to the the bottom one. I'm gonna buff a little bit on this one. amazing what 12 hours can do to cure this yeah. if you ever want to sell them let me know I know some people who would love to have a pot <laughs> I dripped wax on this one. It will be okay. It dries real good. Um, it dries fast, but in order to get that buff, it needs to cure a little bit.
this pot is ideal for craft projects or small projects. Small mix media. Because it doesn't take up all the room on your counter. This is um, just like burning melting candle wax to smell. It's about the same temperature where you're eating your, God, what's it called? <laughs> Extra something. Cleaning up my mess here. ET is not ultra. UT. Ultra thick. Embossing. That's as far as I got yesterday. What's the other E? Hang on just a sec. You only need a ventilated area if you if you let it smoke. And there could be some uh, cadmiums in some of the paint sticks. It's a good idea to have some ventilation. Just to be on the safe side. But in actuality, candles, you burn candles at 200 degrees all over your house and you know so it's it's a precaution that is given if you were doing it on a massive scale you would need more of an industrial type filter thing like a big vent hood but <clears throat> for just like this I've seen people work with it for years and they don't work with any particular ventilation. A lot of people work with it outside, but it just depends on your aesthetic. Okay, I got them off. That's all it takes, and they're gone. I just remelted them, got them soft, and then scraped them off. Nothing exotic. And like I said, it dries almost immediately. Yesterday, I buffed it for the first time about 15 minutes after Um, after I put the last wax on and it cooled a little bit and I was able to buff it, but it just wasn't as shiny as it was this morning. All righty. We've got four watching or more. I'm going to... What am I going to do? I said yesterday. Were you here yesterday? I think I thought I remembered your name. I don't want to do that.
let me get one of the hot tools. I don't know how far ago you you know okay this is just a common ordinary walnut hollow heat gun and to use one with wax you use a temperature regulator It looks like this. And the reason is because a wood burner has one temperature. And it is probably 400 degrees, which is fine for wood, but not necessarily for encaustic. That's probably where it is. Yes, I do follow her. I love Miss Patty. It's kind of like we all travel in packs. <laughs> She's doing the, um, have you seen her working on the uh, Robin McClendon stuff? We're both into that. And I love Robin. for a pair of pliers. Hmm. Missing in action. I haven't worked with encaustic in a while and Got to get the kinks out. I may have to get another tool. Come on now, this shouldn't be this difficult. I'll mess with that. Some other time. Mm -hmm. There's one. So you just, they're all standard. You just unscrew them. That one is stuck. So let's get this little baby fired up. This is my fuse tool from um, Faber, Faber, Faber Castell, but it's made by Walnut Hollow. They're all pretty much the same. The ones from England or Europe have a different, they don't screw, they, um, they have a little 
screw thing here and you tighten and loosen the screw to take it out. Now, what do I want? I want a ball. But they're just kind of like something else to keep up with to me. And caustic is one of the oldest. Art mediums in the world. That's a bigger one. I'd like to have a little one. Littler. I wrapped it in. Okay. We just use that one. Yeah, isn't it good? It's um, it's such an organic style. I really, really like it. Okay, we're getting hot. Now what I'm going to do is make a few dots on this pattern, just like I was doing some doodling. You're going to get a private lesson today. Today's not my usual day, so... Lots of folks been catching on replay. Think about what you're going to do. And this just melts a hole. I need to be able to get the wax out. <laughs> okay, there's one. Let's put another one right here. Got to have some sort of a plan here, Miss Vic. There's three, and let's put four. Mm -hmm. Up. I think I'll be done with that. Um, no, 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 no. 
I have to get down close to this to see if I made any wells. That one I kind of did. I'm just going to take my knife and scrape where the wax was melted and it came up out of the hole. Made a little bit of an edge. Okay, see my five holes? I'm going to use the same oil stick I did yesterday. This is like oil paint in a stick. I have to get up close to see it. I'm filling the holes with white oil paint. Just like that. Hey, everybody that are watching in Munchkin land. Okay, now I take walnut oil, or you can take kitchen cooking oil. And I'm going to go around these areas and take the white off. If I had used white wax, which I couldn't find yesterday. Oops, there's one that's going to have to have more. This one. And I can use white oil paint. I used my white oil paint last week. What was I doing? I don't remember. Anyway, I was using it at a different easel. Oh, I know I was finishing a painting. I got it. Let's see. If 
I can use a pencil to put some in there. Anything that works. This has been, um, this goes back to the Viking period. And I did an intro with some history and some pictures on Sunday. Of particular interest are the Fayum mummy portraits that came out of Egypt during the time. I think it was shortly thereafter. It's it's not really specific in the books. Now. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to look for a stencil that is right here, hanging up to my right. Use one of Patty's symbols right there. I always have to look and make sure I get these right side up. In fact, I think that's a good idea. That one might not be bad. Kind of like this one too. All right, I'm going to use this one. That's one of my favorites. And I'm going to use, let me move this out of the way. I got some new eyeshadows yesterday from China. See, I think I've got, I know I've got, let's just use this one. I just picked up a
Alrighty. See what we got. Pretty good. The lid back on this. This is um, interference color. I'm going to see if I can scratch the edges a wee bit. Hey, Gail. Wasn't expecting you today since this is not my, my usual. Look what I did since yesterday. I added the little dots and I've added a Patty Tolly Parish um, symbol. In the eyeshadows that you may have already gone yesterday when I showed these. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm having to look back at my stencil to see what it does. Okay. Holding my breath, I don't really need to. It snowed here today, Gail. Yeah, then. Cool, cool, cool. I'm glad I thought about that. Now, the, the trick is, I don't know if the mic is going to... Um, disappear with... The heat or not so first thing I'm going to do is set that into the existing wax Excuse me. And if I wanted to sign it, <laughs> get another pencil. I don't think it's Cabello. Let's see if we can find another. Another dirty old pencil. World Gym, that'd be a good one.
I'll just sign my little ones with a V and R. Let me see if I can find a clean finger. Okay, the the symbol is into the wax. It's kind of like using embossing fluid. I mean, not fluid, embossing powders. Now I'm going to put a finishing coat. Now, we'll heat seal that. And it'll be done. Hi, Wendy. Hey, Rosemary. We got a little snow. Did you hear that? A little spitting snow a little while ago. Okay, let me seal this, and then we'll move on. I'm, I'm wanting, I've got a little thick clump there. I want it to move. That's all there is to it. Now that's cloudy until it dries pretty good and then so we'll put that one to the side. How about it? Okay, done with the tool. Plug the other one back in. Did you see this, Rosemary, the other day? It's a temperature regulator, and it's for well, all kinds of things. Uh, I think they use them with um, soldering, and we use them for hot glue guns. Look there, I've got another drop of wax on this one. I got kind of crazy. I should have moved them.
Just a minute. This is typical of me. I get in a hurry and then, but anyway, all buffed up, except for what I just did, and this one too. See how pretty and shiny they are? They're shiny. Isn't that cool? Alrighty. Cool, cool. I'm going to put this in a safe spot somewhere. How about down here on the griddle? I took the plug out of the griddle. So I wouldn't do what I did Sunday. Okay, now Glenda, you can tell Patty that I used one of her, what does she call them? I forgot. One of her things. Safe spot, that too. Okie dokie, I have three coats of wax on this. I did that. I prepared early. I don't need that part again. All right, I'm going to show you this surface. It's smooth, but you can see where there are, if I can get it right, along the edges where I melted my beginning. That's where some of the liquid wax congealed. So I'm just going to take a razor blade. And just scrape until I get it the way I want it. Rosemary has a real nice little encaustic class on encaustic collage. How much longer were you on last night, Rosie?
one more little corner. Pictographs, yes. Well, thank you. I don't know if Rosie's, Rosemary's still here or not. Okay, I tore just some pictures out of a magazine that Rosemary gave me. And I tore them because I like to have raw edges. And the same with regular encaustic like Robin does. Those, um, I'm just scraping off some little dark boogers I got on there. Um, that gives you a more organic edge, number one. And number two, that torn edge keeps it from being ob as obvious that it's a piece of paper. Now, when I, when I frame things or stuff like this, I like to put the same amount of edge at the top and the sides and leave the extra at the bottom in framing and in anything else it just is an illusion um i thought i put mine it's a, it's uh keeps it from it looks like it was painted on i'll i'll get it out in a minute i'm gonna use my burnisher And I'm going to push this into the wax underneath. There are some papers from magazines that do not work for this. And it's something that you just kind of, I do too. I have to try it from. Yeah. Let me look at it. It's driving me crazy. It's going to do it over here too, though. All those little verts off here. I picked it up from Good grief. No wonder it's sticking to everything. <laughs> Got all that off the back. Okie doke. Now. I'm looking for any air bubbles or we talked about this yesterday about um, portrait photographers professional photographers get photographs and they do an encaustic treatment on the front of them and they are really nice looking okay here we go I burnished it. It's now stuck. That's the 
uh, the aspect of it being glue. That's it. So we'll let that cure. And this board warped on me. This is a Luan board. And I applied some wax to the back, hoping it would help it. Ordinarily, if you put, like, if you gesso something and it curls and you put something on the back, it will curl back the other way. I'm going to go ahead and do what I had planned on here. Because this is just exercise anyway. Get up closer. All right. These came from some kind of a national archive. I think I'll put it this way. And again, I try to even. These are real damn close. So I'm going to try to even the space between them with the space on top and bottom. It's almost the same. Let me take a look at it. Pretty good. And the prep on these boards was the same. I did two hard views to get as much of the wax into the board as I could. And I think I probably need another coat or two. So that's what I'm going to do. I want a good, healthy amount. Put it down. Boost. Okay, here we go.
Okay, that was a little bit more of a hard fuse because I wanted to get get it smooth without any bumpies. Hi, Kitty. How are you? Good to see you. Okay, let's give this one now. A, And that's a quick fuse. You just do it just until it turns shiny. And that will bond it with the layer underneath. And then we'll let this cool. Hello to all the lurkers. And hello to anyone who comes in on a replay. This is a live, so we start slow. And wait for folks to finish up other streams they're looking at. Or get home from work or, you know, all that stuff. One thing for sure, I can't bend it. But that sounds like a job for a man. We've had some excellent numbers out in the YouTube world on these encaustic videos. I'm going to wait and let this cool till it's cool and not warm. It's just warm right now because I want to give that wax a chance to settle down. Now, this is where if I wanted to, I could do an alcohol ink border, doodle, whatever. Um, I'm going to leave this plain. You could put gold leaf on the edge. That's not too bad an idea, but I'm going to leave it plain. Because if, if I put gold leaf around it, then you've got to deal with the middle. And I chose this Luon board because the color is kind of organic, like the pear. And this is kind of a an art lesson. I know some of y'all hate my art lessons, but here you would go. If you can determine what the values are, and value meaning dark and light, and if you match your color to the amount of darkness, any color that's that amount of darkness can go in this spot and be beautiful. Okay. And then you just gradually come up to your lightest spot. So that's why in art we use a lot of value studies. So I thought that might, might be a nice little touch. Almost. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just going to put my yeah it's not cured enough yet come on then I'll write on it Hey, Leah, did you make it off work?
While we're waiting on that to cool, I'll show you what I did. I did this. I just put some circles in one of the pictographs from Patty Tolly Park Parish with that new eyeshadow. And the, the candle wax does kind of kill the, the mica. But it fills that hole nicely and it looks good. So this one is... This one is curing, and I think it can have another another coat. Okay, who else snuck in? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, good for you, kitty. Randy used to do that all the time, and they don't want his anymore since he has a uh, non-lethal form of leukemia. Cool. How are we doing over here, little girl? Maybe it was this pencil I used. No. And if I could, if I got up and really wanted to use graphite, you know what's funny? The other day I used one of these and it worked just smooth. Well, yesterday. Looks like Gradu. Gradu, Gradu. Looks like VHR. I wonder if this is softer. Nope. Well, Jim, what do we got here? We have a blue pastel pencil. Okay. 
Oh, we have these sitting right here. Yeah, they didn't go down into the down into the cutter. Now, let's just hope and pray that the vegetable oil gets that off. <laughs> this is what you call testing. Testing as you go. Or something like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Nope. Made a big old mess. We'll leave it at that. Hello to the lurkers. Hello to the people watching on replay. I'm going to do another coat now. Okay, let that cool. Get a drink of water. I want another coat on this. I want this to be pretty thick.
We'll be about ready to go here in a minute. Here's a sample of that accretion I told you about. Just brush the same way. And it catches on the... There's cold wax in the brush. It's really a cool technique. That's an example of how it can be done. Now, if I kept doing that, it would keep hitting just the top um, edges of that. Isn't that cool? I'm going to quit. I'll do some scraping on that before we put our pictures on. Couldn't see what I did with the brush. Oh, oh the white brush, the little white brush that I used to... All, all I did was brush over that, if that's what you're talking about, brushed over that carving of my initials and tried to see if I could get some of the green eyeshadow the powder in there. Is that what you're talking about? That's the only brush I used. Hmm. I don't know. Nothing fancy, I know. Let this cool down, and then I'm going to use this tool. All it is is a sharp on one edge. Actually, it's sharp on both edges. Um, it's just like a razor blade with a handle. Oh, okay. I forgot already. 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All I was doing, I just did that and that and that and that over and over. And those bumpies are catching the wax that's in the brush. See? Yeah, so it, the cool wax still comes off the brush and collects on those high points. That's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, I get you. <laughs> cool wax, yeah. Not the wax with solvent. These are just regular pottery tools. And I'll just put it back in the bucket. Now if I go when it's too warm, I will pull up the warm wax where what I want to do is just get the top edges might be able to get the edges here very light touch scrape it put it back in the pot even though this is a Is warped, it'll still be a good sample. Yeah, it's beginning to get hard enough. You can't do this if it's cold. You know, like if you get up the next morning and try to do it. There's the booger. But if you hit it just right, you can scrape it like that. I've got wax on the bottom of that. I was trying to see if that would cure the warp in this board. Now, these boards are just some that I got at the hardware store. It's called Luon Plywood, and you get it at Home Depot's. Or, and if you smile real pretty at the guy in that section, he'll cut them for you. You have to put your smile on. Yeah, you could take a board and just do the accretion to it. We showed I showed you one the other day when I got the books out. Is that Monday? It's been it's been a nice week with you guys. It's my favorite part, I swear. So if you if you stop melting it with your 
heat gun. If you're just doing a real light fuse, you're liable to get lumpies and bumpies, and this is how you get rid of them. And again, it's a dance. After you've done it some, you'll figure it out. If you get a gouge in it, just reheat it and it'll go away. Couldn't be any easier. Crap, there went my brush. I got it. All right. I think we're pretty pretty darn smooth. All right, so I was going to put this one here. Looks like to be about a half inch. And this one here. So, lucky, lucky, I've got a half inch all the way around and in the middle. Now, that is cool. Yeah. <laughs> one dollar for the first cut. Oh, one dollar beginning. One dollar a cut. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to put a piece of, because this is printed paper. If you get aggressive with your thing, you might scrape the ink off. Hey, Rosemary, um, I talked to Shannon last night about the printers. I didn't know if you talked to her or not. She was getting all kinds of advice on Facebook. Got a smile. <laughs> Goose. Another reason I like a torn edge. Nobody expects it to be perfectly. Alon. I'm going to get the edges. Make sure they're down. Everything is in good contact with the board. Get 
piece of paper. What do you think? What do you think? Okay. Well, obviously she's still looking because that was just that was before the workshop, I think. She'll find. She'll figure it out. She's no dummy when it comes to computers and printers. I sure am happy with the one that that you have and now I have. And I know Robin is very happy with her HP with the subscription ink program. I think she pays $10 a month for 100 prints. And they send her, she says she usually has two or three sets of ink sitting there at any given time. If you were doing this, something like this, just print one in color and one in black and white. And you could come back in and color the black and white one with colored pencils or something like that. So this could be a fun project. I, did. I want, didn't know it was going to do that. Cool. Coolio. Oh, it's 900 for 300 copies. That's even better, Glenda, than what I was thinking. But I already, I already had the one Rosemary does, so that's the one I got. Cool. Man, I got that pretty smooth. Isn't that neat the way the wax trans translucinates the paper? And this little one doesn't need any scraping at all. Just some buffing.
And it won't buff up as pretty today as it will tomorrow. But and that's just something from a magazine. It's actually from one of your um, black and white magazines you sent me, Rosemary. Yeah, and the, the printer that, that we have that Rosemary's talking about has tank. And it comes with two years worth of ink. And I consider myself a pretty heavy user. And I've only used half of the first um, the first fill. I think you should be able to fill it. I'm not sure if it's two or four times. Maybe three. I don't know. Cool. I'm tickled. Let it cool a little bit. Yeah, do you subscribe to them or where um, you get them in a thrift store? That you won't take me to your thrift store? Uh-huh. I know. I know how that goes. I did meet somebody one time in Springdale. I said, oh, I'd love to go thrift shopping with you. She said, oh, no, I couldn't do that. You snap stuff up before I could make a decision. I'm not evil. Whoops. Not a good idea of the paper. Just want to get some of this off the edges. organic anyway right Just did it again. It's all right. Some of this is pooling because of the board being so bent. Now watch this be a favorite piece. And I did it on a board that I think we might do mono prints tomorrow. What do y'all think? I unstiffed my, unstuck my board over here off of the griddle. There are so many things you can do. I'm going to let that cool just a minute or two more. Oh, I've got one right here. I'll show you. So this kind of collage stuff where you make, you make a picture that is not really... Shannon Green does a great job with that. You know, putting the head on top of a pair of cowboy boots. You know, just silly stuff, but it works. See it? Black and white. It is published by... Good Lord, silver, silver ink. Published by Well, it's got a gallery's name. Nineteenth hmm. century, maybe. Anyway. I'll have some fun with those. Okay, we're gonna wrap this one up a little earlier than we did yesterday.
which direction did I go? Scrape. I'm just going to do along. I know what happened on that paper. It's because I let the wax soak into the paper, which made the top side of it thinner. Cool baby, cool baby. Isn't that cute? I mean, you, that'd be a good Christmas gift for your brother. <laughs> Actually, that's a beautiful pose and beautiful lighting. I would paint that. Do they just give their magazines away at libraries? Libraries? The folks that bought out Canvas Corp bought out a coffee shop by the Bentonville Library, so they'll be having all the Canvas Corp supplies in there. Very few air bubbles. That's a good thing. That's what that heavy burn at the beginning does. Very carefully now. Very light. I'll be damned. Pick up that piece of paper again. It's okay.
Stay off the paper. And you just do whatever the piece of art needs. If you want the paintings or the papers under a collage to be more translucent, add more layers. Or for something like this little white one, I think we've got two layers on top. It's a very forgiving medium. Carefully. My Wendy sleep tight. What are you cooking? Paper? I'm going to let this dry. No, I'm going to put another coat on it. And then we're going to quit and I'm going to leave it till tomorrow. Okay? Soup. Some of that good spinach potato soup. Ooh, that sounds good.
All righty. I think I'm having crackle skin, chicken thighs, rice or potatoes, green beans, maybe an ear of corn. That's that corner that keeps tearing. I must not have had it burnished down good enough. This is the can that has some white in it, so this may end up looking kind of foggy. And that is okay. Well, guys, you got any questions? What did he do? What did he do, Rosemary? Night, Gail. Thanks for coming. I'll be on tomorrow at four, and we're going to do some mono printing. I'm going to trim. I'm going to do a little bit before I go into the entertainment room. You're welcome. <laughs> well, Randy was going to make uh, some kind of a Thai soup, but we had soup already one night. That boy could eat soup at every meal, I swear. And I, I never really got that. I don't have that gene. I'm meat, bread, and taters, and sandwich girl. Because this has white in it, because it was a white can, maybe all the more reason for me to attempt to get the stripies out of it. Cabbage pie. My favorite pie is egg custard. Just out of the oven, cool enough to eat. With crispy crust. That's my ADD coming out because y'all know that I have preferences. Did you answer me about how long you stayed on last night, Rosie? Fun, yeah. I used to make damn good flan. Creme caramel.
Oh, Moreau. Oh, okay. Um, like a quiche, then. Um, did you make it home? <laughs> Over the bridge to Grandma's house, okay? I can look up in the camera and see the ridges easier than I can see them here. Trying to get it scraped off evenly. Well, Rosie, the look, the soup warmer works really good. I mean, candle. <laughs> you did good on that one. And uh, I tested the temperature on this one, and the extra 15, 20 degrees hasn't created any problems at all because I don't think it's translating to the to the can. This is another one of those crafts that mediums that you can't really plan too much. That may be enough. Just depends on. That, my friends, is encaustic collage. And you just keep adding and melting and scraping until you get what you want. Now, in the morning, we will get a much better buff. And I really kind of think it could use another coat or two. Just for grins. Okie dokie. There's today's. Ta-da. I'm leaving now. And I will see you guys tomorrow at 4. Some pastels on the encaustic or pastels by themselves. Because I did one. This was pastel, pan pastel, and this one's eyeshadow. Did you see that one? Encaustic. Okay. We can do that. 
Okie doke. I'll see ya. Bye.